Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk NFL Draft. Let's talk about one team that I think is going to have problems, a team I'm going to be looking to fade. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> Now, the NFL Draft, I believe we make a mistake <clears throat> every year. We look at the player in a vacuum. You look at the college highlights of the player, you look at the player's skill set, and then you ask yourself, was this a good pick? And then we rank the drafts based on the player's talents. Now, let me just say the draft to me is actually more about relationships, future relationships. So, I believe it's impossible to look at a guy and to ask yourself, is he a great husband? Without knowing his wife. In other words, you have to get to know his wife. You have to ask yourself, what's she like? What's she looking for? What does she expect? How does this guy fulfill those needs? Now there's an NFL film out there of an interview with Bill Walsh. If there was ever a quarterback whisperer, it would be Bill. Right? Bill is the guy who helped Joe Montana. Bill is the guy who got Steve Young to the San Francisco 49ers. Well, Bill talks about in this NFL Films film that's still available how he talked with the young quarterback once about X's and O's and how to his surprise that young quarterback didn't really know the X's and O's. That young quarterback was what Bill called a natural, operating outside of the X's and O's. Well, understand that quarterback who slipped in the draft ended up with a head coach who had already led two teams to the Super Bowl game, who had already won a Super Bowl. And that coach understood, that coach was Don Shula, that coach understood that this kid was a gunslinger. By the way, his college coach, Jackie Sherrill, reached the same conclusion. They understood that Dan Marino was a gunslinger, a guy who was a little bit outside the X's and O's, a guy who pushed the envelope, a guy who would throw into double coverage at times. That was his decision-making process. And Don Shula, a guy who ran the ball in the 1970s, right? Think Larry Zonka, Jim Kick, Mercury Morris. That same Don Shula understood in the 1980s that he had to give the keys to the car to his young quarterback. So Dan Marino, early, I believe in his second year, becomes the first quarterback of the modern era to throw for more than 5,000 yards in a season. Well, let's look at this draft. You know, Trevor Lawrence, nice guy. Justin Fields, nice guy. Trey Lance, nice guy. Go back through my videos here on YouTube. You'll see that I predicted the Niners would take Trey Lance weeks ago. <clears throat> Mac Jones, nice guy. Nothing wrong with all of those quarterbacks. Understand, those quarterbacks can fit into a system. Those quarterbacks do things according to the X's and O's. So, a new coach, a young coach with a game plan, 
is going to be able to have those guys follow it. But what happens if you've drafted a Brett Favre, who, by the way, wasn't drafted by the Green Bay Packers? What happens if you've drafted a Big Ben, <clears throat> a Russell Wilson, right? A guy who's going to be a little bit outside the X's and O's. A guy who's going to start hitting the hot receiver, who's going to start taking risks, who doesn't want to hand off the ball to a running back a lot, who actually moves around the pocket more than traditional quarterbacks would, who wants to throw the ball more, who wants to throw the ball deep a lot. Isn't that what's caused the strain right now in Seattle between Russell Wilson, who's clearly one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League, and his head coach, Pete, who has won a Super Bowl, who's been to multiple Super Bowls with Russell Wilson. Right? Understand, some coaches want structure. They don't want a gunslinger, even when they have a gunslinger. Other coaches like Don Shula, who thrived in a run-the-football-first offense in the 1970s, will go wherever the talent takes them. So when Dan Marino slips in the draft, understand the Dolphins did not pick him early. Marino slips in the draft. When Dan Marino slips in the draft, Don Shula understands, hey, my run the ball first offense with David Woodley, we're going to toss that off at the side. Right? This young guy, I'm going to let him throw the ball. So many times that if he's up around 5,000 yards, let it be. Well, let me just say, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Mac Jones, Trey Lance, none of them are the level of gunslinger that Zach Wilson is. I believe <clears throat> Zach is just fundamentally different than these guys. If Zach slipped to third... I think that Kyle Shanahan would have had a major dilemma because understand, Kyle Shanahan wants someone who's going to follow a tight script. That's why Trey Lance works. That's why Jimmy Garoppolo works. Right? He doesn't want a Kurt Warner who's going to be throwing the ball all over the field. Who's going to be making reads and making decisions. No, Kyle Shanahan wants you to follow a script. Greg Cosell was recently on Colin Cowherd's show, and he talked about how the role of quarterback in a Kyle Shanahan system is well defined. They need a guy who can follow orders, not a guy who's taking chances and playing hunches. Now, if you've looked at Zach Wilson at BYU, you understand that this guy, quite frankly, in this draft, is it's Dan Marino. Now, I was raised in a Jet household. I'm a Giants fan, primarily. But my dad, who was head of the household, was a Jet fan. Right, So I was raised watching Matt Robinson, Richard Todd, right? You, you name it, those were the guys I was watching. Joe Klecko, Gastineau. Well, let me just say this. I know pundits are looking at the Jet draft and they're saying, wow, great draft. The Jets really nailed this. Right? My point to you is that the Jets, unfortunately, don't have a head coach who 
has taken two different teams to the Super Bowl. Who presided over a dynasty has rings. They don't have Don Shula. They don't have a coach where if the gunslinger fails, throw some picks because that's what gunslingers do. Throws the ball in the traffic, takes big risks. Right, has Brett Favre days when the days aren't great days. They don't have the coach who can stand up to the New York media on his resume. Right, you can imagine when things went a little bit sideways in Miami, Don Shula knew he was Don Shula. Knew his job wasn't at risk. He was in the midst of a Hall of Fame career as a head coach. Right, the Miami press was deferential to him. So he could have a gunslinger be a gunslinger. And no one was going to question it, even when that gunslinger was a young guy who slipped in the draft. Now here you have a guy taken second in the draft, and his head coach is a first-year head coach, Robert Sala. Worse yet, his offensive coordinator is Mike LaFleur, who worked under Kyle Shanahan with Robert Sala. Robert Sala is a defensive guy. He's not an offensive guy. His offensive coordinator isn't exactly Don Coriel. North Turner. You know, some guy who's going to basically look at a kid and realize, you know what, this kid is making plays. Right, this receiver tree that calls for him to look here, look there, then look there. This receiver tree that he's ignoring on this drive. Because he feels he has a hot receiver in a mismatch. He believes in his arm enough where he thinks he can throw in a double coverage. Right? He thinks that his receivers are Duper and Clayton. And he can gain yards somehow. Right? The Jets don't have that, folks. New offensive coordinator, new head coach, out of a Defined system with Jimmy Garoppolo. And you're now going to take a gunslinger. Again, that's who Zach Wilson is. Don't get fooled by the baby face. Understand a gunslinger when you see him. Right. What I want people to do is to go back and look at the last drive of the Super Bowl where Ben Roethlisberger ends it by hitting Santonio Holmes in the corner of the end zone. What I want you to do is to count the number of times during that drive that Roethlisberger throws the ball to Santonio Holmes. Right? That's what gunslingers do. You know, in the early 80s, I, I watched a Bill Walsh quarterback Joe Montana, and it seemed that Montana, who followed X's and O's, who knew them better than everyone else, it seemed that Joe Montana spent entire games throwing to wide open receivers. Right? That's a guy hitting the open receiver. Right? Tom Brady's the same way when he's not playing with Randy Moss. Right? His favorite receiver, as he likes to tell you, is the open receiver. Right? Then what I want you to do is to look at some Dan Marino films. Where guys like Duper and Clayton have DBs practically next to them. In fact, the same Super Bowl where Ben Roethlisberger hits Antonio Holmes. I want you to look at what Kurt Warner is doing in that Super Bowl. Right? Guys are next to Larry Fitzgerald the entire game. Kurt Warner is throwing jump balls to one side of his receiver. That's the kind of courage. 
Those are the kinds of, we'll call it baseballs, on Zach Wilson. He's a risk taker. Right? It's a shame that Don Shula is no longer among us. Because that's who should draft this guy. Not a first-year defensive head coach with a new offensive coordinator in a media cauldron with a fan base that is one of the most passionate in the NFL. Right? You saw yesterday's draft. When the Jets picked, they showed you the Jet contingent. They were there, folks, in Cleveland. They were there. They were ready. Right? These fans have waited long enough. Jet fans know there's only one Super Bowl win in their history. And the guy who got it for them, Joe Namath, is still an ambassador for the team. More than 40 years later. So put me among those. I'm rooting for the Jets. I'm rooting for the Jets. But put me among those. And I believe Zach Wilson is an elite talent. I believe he's as talented as Lawrence Fields Jones Lance. In terms of being a gunslinger, he stands alone. I believe this is the second coming of Dan Marino. But he needs to be in a situation where he's able to be himself. Again, Brett Favre started, I believe, with the Atlanta Falcons. Couldn't cut it there. Right? Ends up on the Green Bay Packers. Is now a Hall of Famer. Right? Russell Wilson. I believe he played for North Carolina State in college. Moves to Wisconsin after his coach tells him he'll never make the pros. Now, of course, he's in the midst of a Hall of Fame career. Right? When you're a gunslinger, you need to be on a team that allows you to be a gunslinger. Right? Steph Curry is great with Steve Kerr. He'd be in trouble if his head coach was Bobby Knight. And he's launching that many threes on fast breaks when other guys are open closer to the basket. Bobby Knight wouldn't go for that. In the Bay Area, Steve Kerr does. Steph Curry is the NBA's only unanimous MVP in the league's history. So I'm fading the Jets because to me the relationship doesn't work. Zach, don't get me wrong. I think Zach Wilson is immensely talented. Don't get me wrong. I'm in the Bay Area. I know Robert Sala is a great defensive coordinator. Don't get me wrong. I'm in the Bay Area. I know Mike LaFleur had that offense popping a couple years ago when the Niners got to the Super Bowl. Right? Everyone here is talented. But the relationship doesn't work. So, I'll be fading the Jets. I'm hoping, I'm just hoping, Zach Wilson comes out, has a couple of high touchdown, high yardage games early, gets the New York press, off his back because Lord knows they're going to be on his back early. Right? In my opinion, the Jets just ran a decent quarterback out of town. Sam Darnold. Another high pick. Right? Let's just say the New York press is going to be on Zach Wilson's back early. I hope he performs well early. If he doesn't, you know how things can turn. Todd Bowles, former Jet coach, just picked up a Super Bowl ring as defensive coordinator of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In other words, you can be great at what you do and fail in the wrong situation. 
right? I'll be fading the Jets the first six weeks of a season, right? New head coach and new quarterback, folks, that's too many strikes in this experienced league where you have head coaches who act in sync with their quarterbacks and you have sharks already in the water, right? Pat Mahomes, same offense that Alex Smith, a quarterback with a high winning percentage, operated, right? They both worked under Andy Reid, right? Understand Alex Smith, great ball control quarterback, right? Many of the same players, right? Travis Kelsey was there. They switch over to Pat Mahomes, a gunslinger. Right? Pat's doing no-look passes. Pat's running around the pocket. Pat's throwing deep. Right? His head coach is Andy Reid. Andy's like Don Shula. Pat thrived. Pat's won an MVP. Pat's won a Super Bowl MVP. Pat's been to two Super Bowls. If Zach Wilson got picked by an Andy Reid team, hey, great. I think great things would happen. He got picked by a team with a first-year head coach who was a defensive coordinator in a media cauldron with passionate fans who aren't afraid to boo. Right? I think Robert Sala and Mike LaFleur are going to expect Zach Wilson to follow orders. I don't think Hall of Famer Dan Marino would thrive in that situation, right? I think they would have been better off with Trey Lance, quite frankly, than with Zach Wilson. When you have a quarterback who is creative, I believe you need to let him be creative, right? Russell Wilson, for all the winning, feels too constrained in the Seattle Seahawk offense. Think about that as you think about Zach Wilson, right? At one point this offseason, we were hearing things like Russell Wilson would be open to be quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Right, think about that. That's with a winning history, with his team and head coach. Let's just say Zach Wilson, who to me is a gunslinger, who took a big step up last year, needs an Andy Reid, needs a Don Shula. I'll be fading the Jets the first six weeks of the season. I hope I'm wrong. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.